Welcome everyone, I have another React challenge. This one is create a number input component. Your task is to create a number input component in React. This component should include an input field and two buttons, one for incrementing the value and one for decrementing it. So there are some considerations here. We have state management. The component should be able to maintain and update its state based on user interactions. Then the step value, the component should accept a step property that controls the amount by which the value in the input field is incremented or decremented. Then we have props, the component should accept props to control its behavior, such as minimum, maximum, and step values. Then we have accessibility. The component should be accessible to all users, including those using screen readers and other assistive technologies. And lastly, styling. The component should be styled in a way that is visually appealing. And then they provided a sample usage. So demo, we have the state, which is simply a number, and then the number input, we pass in the label, and then we have minimum zero, maximum 10, the value and then the on value change. So this is a controlled input. Now, if you want to follow along or even give it a try yourself, you can find this project that is already initialized with Tailwind and Vit with React so that you can clone it and run it right away. I just wanted to drop a quick note to say, if you're interested in learning all about JavaScript and especially TypeScript, make sure to check out my course in Udemy. We go over all of the fundamentals with a very strong emphasis on TypeScript. In fact, the whole course is designed for you to only work with TypeScript, as I want to prepare you for real-world applications. This doesn't mean that you will not learn JavaScript, in fact, this will allow you to learn JavaScript even better. And we will go over the utmost basics of the language, starting out with the lexical structure, control statements, and expanding from there. We also go over front-end with vanilla JavaScript, or should I say TypeScript, and express for the backend. You will learn a sync, the event loop, utility types, mapped types, SAR, the manipulation, and in the end, you will build a full stack application. You can find the link in the description, which already comes with a discount applied. Okay, so let's solve the challenge. For this, what I'm going to do is come here over to components and then UI, and then I'll create a TypeScript component, which is going to be called number input. And here, what I'm going to start off is with defining the properties and then creating the component. So type props is equal to, and then we can import React from React, and then we can say component props with ref, and then we pass in the input. Because after all, this will be an input component. Anything else like the buttons or the div container or whatever else we're going to have isn't really representative of the base component. So we can say export const number input react fc and we get the props. But notice that I said component props with ref. So get the props of a component that supports the ref property. We do this because we want to allow someone to pass a reference. So for that, we cannot declare the component like this. We need to say is equal to react dot forward ref and we pass in the type of the element and then the properties. So we get full type safety. That way the caller or whoever is rendering the component will know that the properties that we can pass in are those of an input. And then we get access to the properties and then the ref. And here we can return an input. We pass in the ref and we can say type is equal to number. And then we spread over the properties. Now we're not going to be accepting any children. So for this, if I save this, then come here over to up and then return 
the number input and save this. If I open this up, as we can see, we get the input. Now at the very least, we should be centering this input. So what I'm going to do is add a class to this div and I'll say the height will be that of the screen, then full width, then flex, then justify its center and then item center. And if I do this, as we can see, the input is now centered. So what we need to do is render two buttons, one on the left to subtract and one on the right to increment. But actually before doing that, let me add some styles to this input. So I'll come here and I'll override the spread class name. So we should actually get the class name and then the rest of the properties. That way we can apply conditional styles and we can say rounded MD, so medium. Then we can add a border and the color of this border will be that of the input. And this is because I'm using CSS variables for this. So we have the background color, the foreground, the card, the popover, primary, all of the CSS classes, which are declared here in the Tailwind configuration. So that's why I can target the input, which the input maps over to this Asia cell color. So with this, we can also add a BG background, which is going to be this one. So this dark one that you see, and then we can add in the case that it is disabled, cursor not allowed, and then disabled opacity, we can say 50, and we should also add some padding, because if I save this and then come here, as we can see, the number is right within the borders of the input, which is not the best style wise. So for this, we can come here and we can say padding on X2, or let's just try padding 2. If I save this, as we can see, it is now looking much better. Now I think this is enough. We could also modify the ring, but for simplicity's sake, let us leave it like this. So now we can start with the buttons. So we need to have the minus and the plus button. So for that, what we can do is render a div, which will be the container. And this one will be flex. And then we can justify the content to be aligned in the center. And I believe no gap should work fine. But we'll see as we go along and style it. So we can say flex. Then we can say item center. And then we can add some border. And with this, we can now create the button. So for the button, what we can do is say const number button react.fc. Then we have the button properties, which is simply component props without ref. And we pass in button is equal to we get all of the properties and then we render the button and we can say BG primary. And if we do this, we can say number button plus and then number button minus. And if I save this, then come back here. As we can see, we get the two buttons. Now the text is wide. So we can say text, then primary foreground, I believe. And if I save this, we now get the plus and the minus. But notice that with the item center, these two buttons are not taking the full height. And that makes sense. So for these, there are a couple of solutions. But actually, before doing that, let's come here over to Lucid, which is an icon pack. They have a lot of icons. And one of them is the plus icon and then the negative or the subtraction icon. So for this, we can come to get started and then installation. And then for the web, simply yarn add lucid. So I can come here, open up my terminal and then add this library. 
And once that's done, we can come here and we can say class icon and class name. We can say hide four with four. And this is actually the other way around. So we can say minus icon here. And if I save this, then come back here. It looks much better, but well, it's not centered. So for that, we can come here and we can say flex item center, justify center. And then now it is centered. But if we do this, if I inspect element and then come here over to the button, we get an error or rather a warning saying a button type attribute has not been set. And for the input, form elements must have labels. So we need to add these changes so we can come here and we can say type is equal to button. And then as for the label, let us first check this out. So the button now has another error, must have discernible text. And that is because we're rendering this SVG, but well, it doesn't have a text describing what the button does, which is really bad for screen readers, since they will just say, this is a button, nothing else. So for that, we can come here and we can say span and then class name SR only. So this is simply going to hide this, but at the very least, a screen reader with this span will know what the button does. So now if I refresh, the error went away. And as we can see, we get this decrease. Now as for the input, it must have a label. So for this, you could say, well, just modify the div to be a label and then add the label such as rooms or something like that. And that works. But the problem is if we set this to be a label, even though the error goes away, if I refresh and come here, there is no error. But what would happen is if you hover over the label or click anywhere else that isn't this button, it is going to focus this input field. And that is why the label exists, because it is tying or binding this helper text that describes what the input is for. So for that, we need to have the label separated from the input. And if you didn't know, if you do this, so if you set a label and you just specify the text and then you have the input, it is going to automatically bind this label with the input. So there is no need to pass in the ID and the HTML for because that is automatically handled for you when you're nesting them. But in this case, since we need to have more control of the styles, and we also don't want to provide the label behavior to everything within this label. What you would do instead is separate the label and target the input and the label with the IDs. So what I mean by this is you would say this is a div, then you would have a parent div. So this would be flex, then flex call, then gap 1.5, and then you would declare the label here. So you would have rooms here, but now they are not connected. So if I inspect element again, then come here, as we can see, the input is still throwing an error. So you could say, okay, let's just add an HTML for then rooms. And then the ID will be rooms. And if I save this, then come back here, the input is now correctly tied to this label. But now how can you pass in the ID? Because we're setting the rooms here, but within this component. But the idea is for this component to be general or atomic in the sense that it shouldn't worry about you declaring what the input is for within this component. This is a reusable component. So you would pass in an ID. So you could say props and then the input ID or something like that. That's one solution. Or the other one is to simply generate a random ID within this component, abstracted away from the color. So you do not have to worry about the binding of the label with the input. 
So for that, you can actually use this hook that is called use ID in React. And if I come here and search React use ID, as we can see, it's a React hook for generating unique IDs that can be passed to accessibility attributes. So you say const ID is equal to use ID, and then you get the ID to bind the label with the input. However, here's a pitfall. Do not call the use ID to generate keys in a list. Keys should be generated from your data, which is why you wouldn't use a math.random for keys in a list either. So we can say const ID, and then we can say HTML4, then the ID, and the ID will be this one. So now by doing this, and for now let us pass in the class name, this was bugging me, if I save this, and then come back here, refresh, and then take a look at what was rendered, as we can see the ID is this one. So now this comes from React. And you also get the benefit of if you click the label, as you can see, it is automatically focusing the input element. But now we need to pass in the label. So we can say and label, this will be required, type string, and then we can get the label and pass it here. And in the app, we can say rooms. So with this, as you can see, it still works but now we can reuse this input. So now with this, we can now implement the logic for subtracting and for incrementing a value. So for that, let me add some spaces here for legibility. What I'm going to say is function, handle increment, doesn't take in anything and will not return anything. So we mark it as void. And then we need access to the value which as we can see is either a string or a number or a read only array of strings or undefined. So what I'm going to do is rename this to original value and then const value is equal to original value is of type number. If it is, we take the original value or we just fall back to zero that way value is now inferred as a number. And we also should be passing the value here. So value is equal to value. And actually let us make this read only as the buttons should control the state. The user shouldn't be able to define anything. Now we need to do some improvements here on the type definition. And that is we need to omit the on change. And the reason is because we are going to be managing that with the handle increment and handle decrement. We do not want to provide the ability to set the on change ourselves, because in the end, this should be encapsulated so that it follows the definition of the actual component, which is incrementing and decrementing by X amount. So what should we pass in instead? Well, for that, we can say on value change, and this will take the new value and will not return anything. So with this, we get access to on value change and we can say on value change value plus one. But remember, we should also be able to pass in a step. So here we have a step value. So we can say two, so now it increments and decrements by two and so on. So we can come here and we can say step, which is not required, but we should fall back to one. And with this, we can say value plus the step and the same for the function handle decrement. And now we can come here and we can say on click and we invoke handle decrement and the same for this other button. Now let us recall quickly what we should do. So step value, we have the props such as minimum and maximum and well, the state management. So we need to handle the minimum and maximum. So that is already being defined here in the rest, but we need to disable the buttons accordingly. 
because if the value is already at the minimum, well, this button should be disabled and the same here. So for that, we can come here and we can say disabled if the rest that min is and let us say values less than or equal to the minimum. But I believe this can be undefined. This is why we get an error. So this is either a string or a number. So I think we shouldn't allow someone to pass in a string. We should constrain it uniquely to numbers. So for that, what I'm going to do is simply say minimum type number and the maximum type number. That way it is well undefined or number. So we need to verify that it is not undefined. So if rest.minimum is different from undefined and the value is less than or equal to the minimum. And we can apply the same logic for the increment. So if the max is different from undefined, and so we check against the value. So now we can also better reflect this within the button. And that is if, and I just noticed, we do not have this defined. So punch the value, set value, and then let's say minimum zero and maximum 10, and then on value change, we get the new value. And all we need to do is set the value to the new value. With this, we can pass in the value that should be required. I believe this is not required. So we can rewrite or override this property so value number and now it is required and so in this case we can get rid of original value because we know it cannot be undefined and so with this if i save this and come back here as we can see it is disabled but to be honest this looks horrible so for this i think we should use grid instead so the buttons have a call span of one, and then this one could have like a call span of two. So we can come here to the parent div or this one, which houses the buttons and the input, and we can get rid of this and say grid, and then grid calls four. And then here we can say class name, call span one, so it takes one column, which I believe is the default. And for this, we can say call span two. And for this button, let's do the same call span one. And if I save this, then come back here. As we can see, it is now taking the respective space. But now we have double borders because this has a border, which is the parent one, as we can see here we have a border border, but the input has one as well. So it is making it look quite weird. So for that, we can come here to the input and we can say only add the border to the X. So horizontally. And with this, as we can see, it is now no longer overlapping and it looks much better. Now let us add with full to this button with full we get an s linter over here so let's get rid of this text and if i save this it now looks somewhat better but what we can do is add a hide full here so now with this as we can see it now takes the whole space so this is now looking decent but I do not like that this has a background color. I feel like this should be like a ghost. So if you hover over the button, you get the background color. But when you're not hovering over it, it should be transparent. So for that, let us actually change this to be instead of text primary foreground, we can say text accent. And then on disabled, it will be a text primary foreground. And if I save this, and seems like it is not working, it is not taking the text accent. 
and that is because it is not text accent but action instead and if i save this now it looks blue but well it looks weird with this background color so what we can do is say bg transparent and with this as we can see it is now looking much better but we need that feedback when we hover over the button so we can instead say hover bg accent and for the text we should have accent foreground instead so that they are synchronized and if i save this now it looks much better now it seems like the buttons are also taking over the border of the parents if i'm not mistaken so let me confirm this if i remove the border as we can see it is now looking good so now with this we get validation if i come here to 10 which is the maximum we cannot modify this and if i decrease it to zero i cannot decrease it further so now with this i'm not sure if we finished the challenge so we have the id this is all accessible we have the buttons disabled is correct and here we can pass in value min max and on value change let me go over the readme again so styling it is styled it is visually appealing at least for me accessibility it is accessible then the properties ah let us test this step let's see if this works so step by two instead so if i save this and then do this as we can see it still works and we have the step value and the state management so as we can see this challenge was very straightforward it was very basic now what i would do is obviously extract this so it is not all crammed up within a single file but instead i would do this so number input and then i would bring this component to this directory and then i would create an index.ts file then i would export everything from this number input and the reason i do this is because since we move this over to this nested directory then we need to also import the path nested so by using the index which is the root we can get rid of this nested path definition and with this we can now collocate the files so now i can come here to directory and i can say number button or you could just call this button and you would just make sure to import the button from the number input that depends entirely on you i'll be more explicit here so number button then i would copy this export this and then we can simply import the number button like this and now there's a separation of concerns but now that i forgot we should also export all from the number button that way again we get rid of the nested path so with this we finished the challenge one thing you could do if you wanted to is to provide all of these as composable components that is you would extract this parent div into the number input component itself and then the label and then this div housing the input and the number buttons and instead of just importing and using the component like this what you would do is say number input so here you would have number input then you close this and then here you have the number input dot label but that would entail setting up the id so you would create the id assign it here so html4 and the id and then you pass in the label so rooms and then you would have the number input dot container or field container something like that you'd close this off 
and then you'd have the number input dot and you could either have the decrement button and the increment button like this or you could make it even more generic and you could say button and then that would mean that you'd have to define the functions yourself so in other words this would create a composable component so you would have full control of the components and so you would have full control of the styles so if you wanted the label to be somewhere else you could just use this label and then wrap it up into a div or whatever you want or if you want the buttons to be stacked vertically instead of horizontally you could modify this container directly but this depends entirely on your use case if you need more granular control you should opt in for these composable components but if you never find the need to do this you can just wrap this up into a single component like we just did and in fact even if you went for this route you could still have this component you would simply export a component that is using all of these composable components and so you could still import it like this and again, if you need more control, you would use this version instead. Now, how can you achieve this? You might be wondering. Well, for that, you can declare the component. So let's say we have a button, const button, React FC. Let us compile it to the job, then label. Let's see if it works. As we can see, we get the label and so on. And then you'd have the component. So let's call this component, although this would be the number input or whichever other component you're going to be creating. And then you could say object dot assign, and then you'd create the root. So the root would be this one here in the app, this one. This would be the container. In other words, the container would be this one because this is the starting point for the component. So you'd say a div, you render a div like this, and then you could say, I want to assign to the root all of these other components, so the button and the label, in such a way that it, now you can say component, and if you just reference the component, you get access to the div, but you can say dot and then button or dot label. And that way you get this composable API, which is very common in Radix UI, headless UI, and other headless components. Anyway, I hope you learned a lot. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you soon.